The 13th Story Treehouse Andy Griffin's Terry Dunton Chapter 1 The 13th Story Treehouse Hi, my name is Andy. This is my friend Terry. We live in a tree. But when I say tree, I mean tree house. And when I say tree house, I don't mean any old tree house. I mean a 13 story tree house. So what are you waiting for? Come on up. It's got a bowling alley, a sea through swimming pool, a tank full of man eating sharks, vines you can swing on, a game room, a secret underground laboratory, a lemonade fountain, a vegetable vaporizer, and a marshmallow screen that follows you around and automatically shoots marshmallows into your mouth whenever you're hungry. As well as being our home, the tree house is also where we make books together. I like the words and Terry draws the pictures. As you can see, we've been doing this for quite a while now. Chapter 2, The Flying Cat. If you're like most of our readers, you're probably wondering where we get the idea for our books from. Well, sometimes we think <coughs> they're not. Other times, they're based on stuff that actually happened. Like this book, for instance. <coughs> it all started one morning when I got up and went down to get some breakfast. <coughs> Jay was already in the kitchen and he was painting cat. When I mean painting a cat, I don't mean he was painting a picture of a cat. I mean... He was painting an actual cat bright yellow. This might be a stupid question, Teddy, I said. But why are you painting that cat bright yellow? Because I'm turning it into a canary, he said. I started to explain to Terry that you can't turn a cat into a canary just by painting it yellow. But he said, yes you can, watch this, and carried the cat dripping over the edge of the deck. No, I yelled as Terry held the cat into mid-air and let it go. But I needed had to worry, <coughs> the cat didn't fall. Two little wings popped out of its back and then tweaked and flew away. See, said Terry, turning to me in a trump. I told you so. The day Terry turned cat into a canary. Chapter 3, The Missing Cat We watched the cat, I mean canary, actually I, th- me, I think I mean the cat canary, <coughs> until it flew out of sight. Then the doorbell rang. It was Jill, our neighbor. She lived on the other side of the forest in a house full of animals. She's got two dogs, a goat, three horses, four goldfish, one cow, six rabbits, two guinea pigs, one camel, one donkey, and one cat. <coughs> Uh-oh, said Terry. She's probably looking for her cat. Don't tell me that was filthy you just turned into a canary, I said. Okay, I won't, said Terry. But it was. This is bad. Jill loved that cat. She loved all of her animals, but she especially loved Silky. Oh no, said I said. This is going to be really mad when she finds out what you've done. Maybe I shouldn't tell her. Good idea, I said. Let's pretend we're not home. We did our best to lay low, but it's pretty hard to hide in a tree house when... It's no use hiding, called Jill. I can hear you and I can see you. Silky's gone missing. I was wondering if you, you'd you seen her. No, I said quickly. She's not here. Now, if you start thinking I'm kind of a person who would tell a lie, then I would just like to point out that all through the first part of my sentence, no, was technically a lie. But the second part, she's not here, was definitely the truth, which I'm sure you'll agree can't tell that lie. Oh, said Jill sadly. Well, anyway, I made a missing cat poster. Can I put one on your tree? Sure, said, I said. It's the least we can do, which is also definitely 100% true. As soon as Jill left, I turned to Terry. We've got to find that cat, I said. You mean canary, said Terry. Whatever I said, we've got to find her. But before we could start, begin looking for her, the video phone rang. Yes, we got one of those as well, and it's 3D. Maybe it's silky now, said Terry. Don't be stupid, I said. Cats can't use phones. Maybe they can, said Terry. You just said they couldn't turn into canaries, and you were wrong about that. 
Chapter 4 The Big Red Nose We raced back upstairs. A big red nose filled the video phone screen. Uh oh, with Mr. Big Nose, our publisher. And he was angry. I could tell because his nose was even bigger and redder than usual. Where's my book? he yelled. What book? said Teddy. The one you chuckled had promised me a year ago. The one that would be my death last Friday. Oh, said Teddy. Oops. Is it last Friday already? It passed last Friday, shouted Mr. Big Nose. Way past. And your book is still not on my desk. The truth was we kind of forgotten about the book. We were a little behind schedule. But when I say a little behind schedule, I mean a lot behind schedule. And when I say a lot behind schedule, I mean a lot, lot, lot behind schedule. Not that I would about to tell, let Mr. Big Nose know that it was already pretty angry. And the angry he gets, the bigger his nose gets. And if his nose got any bigger, I was ready and might explode. And that's not something I wanted to see, especially not in 3D. No problem, Mr. Big Nose, I lied. It's under control. We'll get it to you as soon as we can. Well, as soon as you can, better be by 5 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Or else. Don't worry, I... Don't worry, Mr. Big Nose, I said. Don't worry, Mr. Big Nose, I said. It will be the old rat. You can You can count on us. But, said Terry, I quickly ended the call before Terry could say anything that would make Mr. Big Nose any angrier than he already was. You shouldn't have told him that, said Terry. I'm way too busy to get it done by tomorrow. Look at my to-do list. I'm flat out. I'm flat out. Don't even get me started on my to-don't list. Your to-dos and to-don'ts will just have to wait, I said. If we don't get this book finished, it might be the monkey house for us. The monkey house, said Terry, looking terrified. Not the monkey house, anything but the monkey house. For those who, know, you, who don't know what the monkey house is, where Terry and I used to work, it was the worst job ever. Cleaning the monkey house was bad enough. Grooming the monkeys was even worse. But the worst job of all is having to fill in for the monkeys while they were on their break. I'm not going back to the monkey house, said Terry. And that's why I know. And if you won't have to, I said, not if we get our book finished. Come on, let's get started. We've only got until tomorrow. Chapter 5, The Drawing Competition. We went to the kitchen table. It's where we do most of our work. Or rather in the case, past year it didn't do most of our work. But as you can see, we fixed it. I figured we have a funny sketches in the drawing folder. And to get us started, it will simply be a matter of grabbing the best one, adding a few words, and hey presto, we would have our new book. No sweet, no worry, we got professional book writers after all. I mean, you saw our pile of books on page 18. Just in case you skip page 18, this is what it looks like. Okay, I said. Let's see what you've got. Terry opened his drawing folder and laid it flat on the table. You're going to love this, he said. In front of me, there was a picture of a finger. This is a picture of the finger, I said. Yes, <laughs> said Terry proudly. But not just any finger, it's my finger. Uh-huh, I said. What else have you got? I got a close-up picture of my finger, said Terry, and it's labelled. I stared at it. Well, said Terry, a big grin on his What do you think? Life 
picks. Guess it or not ice picks. Life picks. Yeah, I get it. Said I said tell. I turned the pages to look for more pictures, but all I saw was this. And this. And this. Is that it? I said two pictures. You've had a whole year and you've only come up with two pictures. Honestly, Terry, do you expect me to do all the work, the pictures as well as writing? Of course not, says Terry. You can't draw. Yes, I can, I said. Drawing is easy. Come. Coming up with the words takes really real skill. If you think drawing is so easy, you have no problem. If you think drawing is easy, then let's have a competition, said Terry, handing me a pencil. No problem, I said. First we drew it out. That's not a knife, said Terry. This is a knife. Next we draw a worm. That's not a worm, said Terry. This is a worm. Why wow, my picture looks so good, the bird thinks it's real. Next we drew a banana. That's not a banana, said Terry. This is a banana. No, I said. That's not a banana. This is a banana. I picked up the giant banana that Terry had made the day before and charged at him. I put the giant put the giant banana down, Andy, said Terry, backing away. I'll put it down, I said, when you admit I'm a better drawer than you are. Okay. But you're not. Okay, I said. And then I'm sorry to inform you that I will have to whack you over the head with this giant banana. Not if I can whack you first, said Terry, snatching the banana from my head and whacking me over the head with it. Suck! And every, that's when everything went black. The next thing I knew... I was soaking wet, and Terry was kneeling in front of me, holding an empty bucket. I'm so glad you're, you are all right, he said. I saw I killed you. So did I, I said. I can't believe you whacked me in the head with that giant banana. But you were going to whack me with it. Two wrongs makes, don't make a right, Terry, I reminded him. I suppose not, he said. And I'm sorry, but look on the bright side. At least I saved you by some, uh, saved your life by throwing a bucket of water on your face. But now I'm all wet. Yes, but at least it's better than being dead. I'll tell you one thing, I said. Both. Um, I said. Both of us. And both. We're, we are both as good as dead if we don't stop wasting time and get our books finished. You mean having it in your writing folder? You mean get our books started, said Terry? Do you have anything in your writing folder? Ask me. I do have the start of the story, I said. It's a pretty good one, too. Oh, that's great, said Terry. Let's see it. I grabbed my writing book and began turning the pages. Once upon a time. Great start, said Terry. Action pack. But what happened next? I'm not sure, I said. That's a far as I caught. That's it, said Terry. Four words? Four pages, I said. Yeah, but it's still only four words. <laughs> and one of them isn't even spelled right. I'm pretty sure it's a pom, not a pom. Well, excuse me, Mr. 
Rattle Da. I said, if you don't know about story writing, why don't you write it? Because it's time for my favorite TV show, said Terry. What about our book? I said, why don't you write while I watch? And he said, because I can't write when the TV is on. I said, I can't concentrate. Then I we come and watch one, I said Teddy, patting a bean bag beside him. And that's why, instead of working on our book, we ended up wasting half an hour watching the world's dumbest dog on the world's dumbest TV show. Chapter 6 The Barky, the Barking Dog Show. Barky and the Big Hall Bark. Bark, 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 Chapter 7 The Monster Mermaid See what I mean? The TV shows See what I mean? TV shows don't get much dumber than that Okay, Terry, I said Okay, Terry I said, we're finally over Let's get back to work It's time for my second, second favourite show Said Terry Buzzy the buzzing fly. Oh no, it's not. I said, grabbing the remote and turning the TV off. Oh yes, it is. Said Terry, snapping the remote out of my hand and turning it back on. Actually, I'll think you find that it's not. I said, picking up the TV and throwing it out of the tree. Off. It landed with a crash on the ground below. Terry shrugged. I guess you are right. He said. Hey, yelled a voice that almost landed on my head. Oops, I peeped over the edge. It was Bill the Postman. Sorry, Bill, I said. It was an accident. That's all right, said Bill, chuckling, delivering the mail to the certain sorry tree house. It's always an adventure. Is young Teddy there? I've got a parcel for him. A special delivery. Yes, said Terry, sprinting for the ladder. I'll be right down. He returned a few minutes later with a package. My sea monkeys, he yelled as he opened it. They arrived at last. Sea monkeys, I said. What do you want them for? We've already got a perfectly good tank full of man-eating sharks. But sea monkeys are much better than man-eating sharks, said Shark said Terry. Sea monkeys have three eyes. They breathe through their feet. They have they build vast vast underwater kingdoms. Sharks can do any of that. They don't even have feet. I'm going to make my sea monkeys come alive right now. Not so fast, I said. You've got a book to write, remember? I know, said Terry. I'll promise I'll get to work right after I get sea monkey. They'll come to life instantly. All I have to do is to add some water. Please, please, please. Okay, I said, but hurry. Trust me, said Terry, rushing to the elevator. I'll be right back. I wait for a long time. Then a really long time. Then a really, really long time. Then, <laughs> but he didn't come back. Eventually, I found him down in the secret underground laboratory. What are you doing? I said. You were supposed to take to be adding water to the eggs. I am said Terry. I'll finish making the uh, a purser that will help me measure the exact amount of water I need. Too much and the three monkeys could drown. Too little and they could suffocate. But you said the hatching eggs will be instant, I said. 
and it will be it, I said Teddy, just as soon as I add the water. Now stand back. And he pushed the button and the water dripped out off the machine. Drop, 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 by painfully slow drop. By drop, 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 by even more painfully slow drop. Drop, 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 drop. Drop, 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 Million, trillion, gazillion, painfully slow drops later, it was done. At last, I said, add the eggs quick and let's go get back to work. Sure, said Terry. <laughs> I, I just have to purfy the water. How long will that take, I said. Terry looked at the packet. 24 hours. What, I said, but that's a whole day. Don't be silly, Andy, said Terry, laughing. There aren't 24 hours in a day. Yes, they are, I shouted. And if you think I'm going to let you waste any more time on these stupid sea monkeys, then you're out of time and your brain must be a sized mind. What's your language, Andy? said Terry. There might be children reading. I don't care who is reading, I said. Put your sea monkey in the... Uh, sea monkey egg in the water right now or else I swear I'll have to shove the jar on your head for head for uh, head for so hard that it will be stuck on there for the rest of your life. How would that how would you like that? Terry thought for a moment. What would it be like to live the rest of my life with a jar on my head? I don't think I would like it at all, he said finally. I guess I'm the person we can skip the word for your friends to add the egg straight away. Great thinking, I said. And Teddy hand was trembling. He poured the sea monkey's egg into the jar and stirred him up into the light. I've done it, he shouted. I'm a genius. I've created life. He was right, but not about being a genius. Of course, there was definitely a bunch of newly hatched sea monkeys bobbing around in the jar. Well, that's just great, I said. Now can we get back to our book? Not yet, says Terry. I have to feed. <laughs> I have to feed them one a level of scoop of official. Sea monkey growth food, I think. What does that mean? Does that mean now I have to build one level scoop of growth food dispensing machine? No, me for that. They come with their own official sea monkey growth food dispensing Monsanto. I said Terry, as he sprinkled the sea monkey growth food, growth food. A plastic spoon into the top of the jar. The food triggered a feeding frenzy. Well, in one sea monkey, at least it swam straight to it and sucked it all up before the others could get any. What a Guts, said Terry. Better put some more in, I said. Terry measured another spoonful, bring it into the trap. Once again, the greedy sea monkey ate it all. And it started, and then it started to grow. Within seconds, it doubled in size, then doubled in size again. Then it swam around and died and ate a whole other sea monkey. It grew bigger and bigger.
and bigger. It's getting too big for the jar, it said Terry. Get a breaker, I said. A really big breaker. Terry darted away and returned with the biggest breaker we had. <laughs> that ought to hold it, he said. As he took the sea monkey from the dark watching home. But the sea monkey kept on growing and seemed a bit too big for the beaker. So we tipped it into a bucket. But quickly it outgrew as that as well. It's no use, said Terry. We need something even bigger. How about the bath, I said. I didn't know we had a bath, said Terry. Yes, I said. We got to be meaning to talk to you about that. It's in the bathroom. I didn't know we had a bathroom, said Terry. Just bring the bucket and follow me. That's one weird looking sea monkey. It said that weird looking sea monkey. I'm a mermaid. A mermaid, said Terry, looking like he was about to cry. But mermaids are for girls. I ordered sea monkeys. It's not my fault, said the mermaid. Let me must have got mixed up in the fat query. My name is Mermaida. What's yours? Terry, he said. That's a nice name for a merman, said Mermaidia. I'm not a merman, said Terry. Oh, I thought you were, said Mermaidia. Gazing at Terry, you are suddenly... Certainly looking good, good looking, enough to be one. Terry blushed and giggled. Hello, I said. I'm Annie. Uh huh, said Mermaidia, not taking her eyes off Terry. I love, I live here too, I said. Uh huh, said Mermaidia. Why don't you run along now, Sandy? <laughs> Terry and I. Would be like to be alone. Yes, said Terry dreamy. But what about our book? I said. <coughs> Going to do that, but it was no use. They were listening to me. They were just gazing into each other's eyes. It was quite embarrassing, actually. I stepped out of the room and closed the door. The thing was, I was though, I could still hear what they were saying. You are so sweet, said Mermaidia. I wish I could stay here with you. But you can. Can't you, said Terry? Uh, no, said Mermaidia. I can't believe you live in Baxter forever. We've got a swimming pool, said Terry. It's seafood. You can live there. But I need to live in the sea. It's where I belong. Oh, said Terry, sadly. I know, Mermaidia, but why don't you come to live with me in this two story sand castle under the sea? That would be nice, said Terry. But I'm not a merman. I can't breathe underwater. There's a way through, said Mermaidia. When a human and a mermaid get married, the human becomes a merman. And all we have to be married is kiss. I should... I should have rushed in and broken it up. <laughs> right, and then there was... And then there, and then there, but I didn't want them to know I'd be listening. And besides, it was too late anyway. I said it. I heard the sound of an unmistakable sound of a human and a mermaid kissing. Oh, darling, screamed Mermaidia. I'm so happy. Let's leave right away. Okay, said Terry, I've just got to say goodbye to Andy.
All right, I'm a bit heavy. Simon, yeah, yeah. I'm picky. I don't know how much longer I can last this bath water. I quickly hid as Terry came out of the bathroom. He climbed down the ladder and started looking for me. Andy, he called. I need to talk to you. <laughs> but I was about to go down and join him when I heard a strange girly sound coming from the bathroom. It sounded like Mermaid I was choking, and even though I especially didn't like her, I thought I should still see if she was alright. I entered the bathroom and caught sight of her reflection in the mirror. What I saw was definitely not at all in fact. He was very wrong. Very, very wrong. Mermaid Yell wasn't a mermaid. Mermaid Yell anymore. She was a sea monster. How could I be so sure about the sea monster? Well, for a start, her slimy sea, she wants to be skin. A slimy sea monster is trying to call. A slimy sea monster is skin. But oh, above all, I think it was the fact she was saying, bathroom mirror on the wall. Who's the sneakiest sea monster of all? And that's really good for me. I know. You know when you see something so horrible you want to look away, but you can't? Well, this was so horrible, I had to get my flip camera and record it. Bathroom mirror on the wall. Who's the sneakiest sea monster of all? Human does not suck the sink. He sucks with the dingo lane. You think that we will live in the palace of the sea? Bring us the sea. He does not know I'll be. He does not know this will not be. Instead, he will be dinner for me. I'll lure him down beneath the water. Oh, how I'll. In and then his body, I will float it. Oh, how. I'll in oh, oh, how I'll enjoy him and, and tear him apart limb from limb. I'll eat his eyes and ears and nose and suck the marrow from his toes. I'll crush his green sea brain's head and bring his bones to make my bread. I trap his set, my plans are laid. I all I must do is he but a charade. To me, a monster, the brain is the first stage. I'm an ugly, innocent, sweet mermaid. That was monster became mermaid.